Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Welcome sa isa na naman pong episode ng online learning ni Inang Pamantasan kung saan ang pagkatuto ay walang hangganan. Ito ang PNU Talks. Ako nga po pala si Ginoong Salvador E. Manansala I, ang inyong learning from home body ngayong araw. Ako po ay nagtapos sa Pamantasan Normal ng Pilipinas noong taong 2013 sa kursong Batsilyer sa Edukasyong Pang-Elementarya at ako po ay nagpakadalubhasa sa pag-aaral sa kababaihan. Sa so, ngayon pong araw na ito, ang atin pong pag-aaralan ay tungkol sa reinventing the wheel, empowering the teachers in preparation for the new normal classroom. I-comment po ang inyong mga katanungan at ang mga kuro-kuro tungkol sa ating episode ngayong araw. At huwag niyo pong kakalimutang i-like and i-share ang ating episode ngayong araw. So to formally start my presentation, this is my slide. Today, I'll be discussing to you about reinventing the wheel, empowering teachers in preparation for the new normal classroom. So according to Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones, our Secretary in Education, education must continue. The novel coronavirus has instantly changed the way education is delivered, given that the school and home have now become the same place due to the necessary regulations put into effect. And according to the UNESCO, more than 861.7 million children and young people in, nine, in 119 countries have been affected by having to deal with this global coronavirus that has shaken the whole world this year. It will be recalled that at the height of the Marawi uprising, our call was for education to be continued. In the midst of the coronavirus crisis, our call remains the same. Education must continue, whether face-to-face -face or virtual, with, with or without physical, physically going to school. Rest assured that any decision that will be made for the continuation of the learning of our learners, the learners, the parents, the students, the teachers, and the general public, that the health, well-being, and safety will be the primary concern. So today, I'll be discussing to you some preparations, some things that have done in, to be able for our teachers na maging ready sila sa paparating na academic year. Let's take a look at the population of the DepEd. Basic education directly accounts for nearly 30 million individuals, not counting the ancillary services, supporting the education system, including the transport, food, and other services. As of this time, we have 27,748,477 learners from K-12 to and ALS, including those enrolled in special education classes, 900,000 teachers and personnel, and 300,000 private school teachers and principal. This represents about 27.8 of the estimated 108 million current Philippine population. So, dito pa lang makikita na natin na talagang isa sa pinakamalaking kagawaran sa atin ay ang Department of Education na kung saan marami rin maapektuhan kung hindi magpapatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga bata. According to this one, access to quality education and holistic development cannot be compromised in times of crisis. Dati ang pinaghahandaan natin ay yung mga natural calamities tulad ng mga bagyo, earthquake, at ano pa mga pwedeng makapaghamper sa pagpapatuloy ng ating edukasyon. Pero ngayon, ginulat tayo ng COVID-19 kung saan masyado nang mahaba. It's been two months, pero naka-quarantine pa rin tayo. So, whether naka-quarantine tayo or regular man at bumalik man tayo sa normal, education must continue at hindi pwedeng apektuhan ang edukasyon ng mga bata. School opening will not necessarily mean traditional face-to-face -face learning in the classroom. As we all know, on August 24, 2020, the school year 2020 to 20, school year 2020, 2021 will start. And according to this one, the physical opening of schools will depend on the risk of severity of grading or classification of the locality pursuant to the guidelines of the Department of Health and Interagency Task Force or the Office of the President. Even in areas where schools are allowed to open, physical distancing will be required, which all necessitate 
schools to combine face-to-face -face learning or distance learning. Let us always keep in mind na sa paparating na academic year, hindi lang po face-to-face -face ang gagamitin po natin. Iba-iba pong modalities, learning modalities ang ating gagamitin. May distance learning, may online learning, may homeschooling. Ibig sabihin po, the learning modalities that will be implemented on a particular locality will depend on the situation. If face-to-face -face will be allowed, then it's okay, but we need to observe physical distancing. But at some area na medyo high risk of uh, COVID contamination, then hindi po talaga pwedeng magkaroon ng face-to-face -face interaction. And to answer the call for this uh, pandemic, recently, the Department of Education released the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan or the BELCP. The Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan was developed to provide guidance to the department on how to deliver education in this time of crisis while ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of all learners, teachers, and personnel of DepEd. Lagi po nating isinasaisip na sa pagubukas ng klase, kailangan nating pangalagaan ang ating mga guro, ang ating mga mag-aaral, at ang iba pang kawani ng kagawaran ng edukasyon. Kaya naman po, sa DepEd po, isinasaalang-alang po lagi ang kapakanan ng guro at ng mga mag-aaral. Some of the principles of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan protect the health, safety, and well-being of learners, teachers, and personnel and preventing the further transmission of COVID-19. Another one, ensure learning continuity through K-12 curriculum adjustments, alignments of learning materials, implementation of multiple learning delivery modalities, and providing corresponding teacher and parent guardian training. As we prepare for this new normal in education, we see to it that all of them, all of the stakeholders, will be part of the preparation. Lahat tayo may kanya-kanyang gampanin para sa ikabubuti ng kagawaran at ikabubuti ng edukasyon sa ating bansa. Facilitate safe return of teaching and non-teaching personnel and learners to work and school. So tulad nga ng sinabi ko po kanina, safety is the foremost priority of the DepEd. Be sensitive to equity considerations and concerns and endeavor to address them as the best as we can. And lastly, link and bridge the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan to DepEd's FIBOT quality and into the future of education under the framework of Sulong Edu Kalidad. And let us always keep in mind that the Department of Education aims to sustain the delivery of quality, accessible, relevant, and revelating basic education services for all learners in the midst of COVID-19 emergency via flexible learning options. DepEd, true to its mandate of delivering this quality, accessible, relevant, and basic education to all learners using different learning modalities because we believe that never stop learning. And to be able for our school year to continue, we will be utilizing different learning modalities in the upcoming school year. Schools with the guidance of the Schools Division Office and the Regional Office may opt for the appropriate learning modalities given the local health situation of the communities being served, options of parents and guardians, available resources including manpower and learners' special needs, and other considerations. So as we all know, the implementation of a particular learning delivery modalities will depend on the situation and will depend on what is applicable on that particular area. So today I'll be discussing to you different learning modalities as presented in the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan. These are the learning modalities. Sa mga lugar na hindi naka ECQ at GCQ, face-to-face -face delivery, if possible, and blended learning approach. Sa mga lugar naman po na naka ECQ at GCQ, distance learning and homeschooling. Now, let us discuss it one by one. For face-to-face -face learning, this is the traditional learning environment where the students and the teachers are both physically present in the classroom. It is delivered through 
opportunities for active engagement, immediate feedback, socio-emotional development of the learners. In the areas where face-to-face -face learning is allowed, there shall only be a maximum of 15 to 20 students per class in compliance with the social distancing measures of the Department of Education and the Interagency Task Force. For our blended learning approach, blended learning allows combination of face-to-face, -face, online, and modular learning. It limits face-to-face -to, -face to learning delivery, affords social distancing, decreases the volume of people outside home at any given time. In the implementation of the blended learning approach, we need to take into consideration some of the things that we need to consider in relation to the COVID-19 situations that we are facing right now. First, it is lesser risk of COVID-19 exposure. Another one is areas location is too high and low risk. And if schools up for this learning delivery modality, class size in schools is reduced to physical distancing, is easier to implement on campus. So we will have the same understanding that kapag ito ang ginamit, we should observe physical distancing among the learners and the teachers. Blended learning delivery can be a combination of face-to-face -face and modular distance learning. For face-to-face -face and modular distance learning, it can be an option for learners with disabilities whose conditions allow to blended learning. It can also be an option for schools in geographically isolated, disadvantaged, and conflict affected communities where physical distancing is needed due to the infection risk in that area. As we all know, in DepEd, we are advocating for inclusivity from K to 12 down to our ALS learners and our learners enrolled with special education or those uh, persons with special needs. Another one is the face-to-face -face and online distance learning. On this particular mode of uh, delivery, learners have the needed gadgets and reliable internet connection. As we all know, in the Philippines, we are now currently facing problems with internet connections and some students ay medyo walang gadget. But I, uh, let's expect for something that is positive before the start of the school year. And this, this problem will be addressed by the department. Another one is face-to-face -face and TV radio-based instruction. It can be an option for the school in the geographically isolated, disadvantaged, and conflict-affected communities where there is no internet connectivity and radio-based instruction has been done through ALS and or a TV is available. As we all know, some of our teachers, some of our parents, uh, medyo ang worry nila is wala silang gadgets, wala silang needed device for this online learning to, pro to continue. So, nakita yan and then we are now advocating for TV and radio-based instruction. Ano po bang ibig sabihin ng TV and radio-based radio instruction? Meron ng mga move, nagsisimula na po sa pag-craft ng mga video lesson. This is educational video lesson na naka-angkla. This is anchored on the most essential learning competencies na inilabas po ng ating kagawaran itong nakaraang linggo na kung saan ang mga lessons po ay naka-video format para po doon sa mga may television. Kung wala naman pong television, meron naman po tayong mga audio format uh, learning materials na pwedeng gumana through radio or by hearing. And we are also preparing for the development of e-book e materials, interactive e-book materials that can address the needs of our learners. And currently, uh, there is a plan to convert some of the uh, flat type format po ng mga learning resources into voice and non-voice e-book materials. So, these materials, yung mga materials na hinahanda po natin ngayon, will address different learning styles and different types of learners na meron sa loob ng classroom. Kung may internet ka, you have an option. Kung wala po kayong internet sa bahay at nahihirapan po tayo sa gadgets, you have also an option kung saan po kayo pupunta. Isa lang pong ibig sabihin nito, hindi lang po isa. 
ang pwede natin gamitin sa paparating na school year. We have many options. It depends on our needs. It depends on the availability of resources. But at the end of the day, ang mahalaga, education must continue. And for the last one is face-to-face -face and or modular distance learning, online distance learning, and TV radio-based instruction. As we all know, ito na po yung pinagsama-sama na po, combination na po ng different blended learning delivery approach. Now, we have the distance learning. Distance learning is the most viable for independent learners and learners supported by periodic supervision of parents and guardians. It can be delivered through online platforms, educational programs, and printed modules. Later on, I'll be showing you some of the learn online learning platforms initiated by the Department of Education and some of the available learning management system that the teachers can use for free. And recently, nagkaroon po ng talk about educational programs wherein there is a plan to allocate a particular channel for DepEd. This will be a DepEd TV wherein lessons will be broadcast using that platform. Hopefully, it will work and we are hoping for this because this will help especially those who are living sa mga tinuturing natin ng mga last mile schools. And printed modules. Siyempre, rich in content tayo pagating sa printed modules. And today, those printed modules ay kinoconvert na po into an e-book materials to address the needs of our learners. And we need to consider the following in the context of COVID. There are some considerations such as lesser risk of COVID exposure, Another one is areas location is moderate to high risk. And if some learners opt for this learning delivery modality, class size in schools is reduced so that physical distancing or social distancing will be observed. And these are the options. We have modular distance learning, online distance learning, and lastly, we have TV radio-based instruction. So, these are the options for our distance learning delivery mode. Now, we have homeschooling. For homeschooling, it provides learners with equal access to quality basic education at home to be facilitated by qualified parents, guardians, and tutors who have undergone relevant training. Families can educate according to their personal faith, philosophy, and values. Learning schedules may adjust to fit the family schedule and circumstances. And now, since we discussed different learning modalities, we are now entering to a new normal in education and learning. But the problem is, how are we going to do the, the transformation from the traditional approach to the new normal in education and learning? First, we will start with a shift of learning space from public space to private space. As we all know, some of the most of the learning modalities presented a while ago is more of self-paced learning, distance learning. So, yung mga estudyante natin at their own face, at their own private home nila magagawa. Shift of delivery methods from one size fits all to individualized and differentiated learning. Uh, gusto kong bigyan diin itong pangalawa, shift of delivery methods. Huwag po nating isipin Nasa school year 2021, 2020, 2021, ang gagamitin lang po natin ay face-to-face -face discussion. Hindi po siya one size fits all. Meron po tayong ipinakita kanina na different learning modalities na pwede niyong gamitin. It can be a combination of one learning modality to another learning modality. Let us always remember yung gagamitin nating learning modality kung saan tayo mapapadali at kung saan meron tayong resources. Kasi mas madali nating magagawa ang isang bagay kung alam natin kung paano siya gawin at pangalawa kung meron tayong sapat na kagamitan para ma-implement ang ganung klase ng learning delivery modality. Next, shape of responsibility. Shape of responsibility of teaching and learning process by means of active participation of household members. As we all know, kapag hindi nag-improve ang situation, more or less, distance learning, online learning, and homeschooling po ang mangyayari. And if that happens, kailangan po talaga yung strict supervision ng parents sa kanilang mga 
anak na nag-aaral. Napakaganda po nitong pagkakataon na ito kung magkaroon man tayo ng distance, online learning, or homeschooling kasi nagkakaroon tayo ng bonding moment sa ating mga anak. Nade-develop natin yung uh, harmonious relationship sa ating mga anak. And, and it's a bonding moment na talaga magkakaroon ng isang maayos at magandang pamilya at yung pagkatuto ng bata ay magiging okay dahil nandyan ang mga magulang nila para tumuro, para magturo po sa kanila. Shift in learning evaluation, so from final examinations to formative assessments. So these are the things that we need to consider in transforming from traditional approach to the new normal in education and learning. Now, isa sa pinakamahalagang bagay na dapat maghanda para sa new normal in education ay ang ating mga kaguruan. Alam naman natin, ang mga guro ng kagawaran ng edukasyon ang siyang humaharap sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sila ang nagdi-deliver ng mga most essential learning competencies na inilabas ng kagawaran. Kaya naman po, nararapat lamang na ating mga guro ay palakasin at bigyan ng sapat na trainings at mga professional development programs para maihanda sila sa paparating na new normal in education. Sa panahon po ngayon, in times of COVID pandemic, hindi po natin pwedeng maisagawa ang face-to-face -face delivery mode ng mga seminars at mga professional development programs for our teachers. Ngayon po, nakaasa po tayo sa webinar sessions, virtual sessions kung saan mas malayo ang nararating ng ating webinar sessions. Kasi kung halimbawa, if it's face-to-face -face learning, learning sessions lang with our teachers, limited lang ang pwedeng makasali at ang pwedeng matuto sa mga bagong kaalaman na maaaring malaman ng mga guro. But sa paggamit po natin ng teknolohiya, using webinars as our platform, mas marami po tayong nararating, hindi lamang po sa Metro Manila, kundi sa buong Pilipinas, sa ang panig ka man naroon, basta may internet ka, pwede kang ma-empower in preparation for the new normal classroom. Bibigyang diin ko na napakahalaga po na ang mga teachers ay maihanda dahil sila ang haharap sa ating mga mag-aaral at sila ang inaasahang huhubog sa mga kabataang sinasabing pag-asa ng ating bayan. So ano nga ba ang ginagawa natin sa Educational Technology Unit? So, in accordance with the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan for this school year 2020 to 2021, the goal is to prepare teachers to adopt, implement, and manage remote learning modalities as alternative and complementary delivery modality to face-to-face -to -face in school learning. So, it is clear na ang talagang primary goal is to prepare our teachers and Recently, sinabi po ng ating uh, butihing secretary, uh, Ma'am Leonor Magtolis Briones, na ang mga guro ay magre-report po sa June 1, 2020. At hindi po ibig sabihin na magre-report, kailangan po physically mag-report po ang ating mga guro. Pwede po virtually mag-report ang mga guro, depende na po kung ano ang magiging arrangement sa division at sa school. Kasi may mga nagsasabi, hindi pa safe sa June 1. Let's always remember, dalawa po ang options po natin for June 1. Physically, if okay na ang condition sa inyong lugar, pero the safest thing to do is virtually pa rin po. So through online meetings, online webinars, yun po ang magiging modalities po sa darating na June 1. And... I would like to present some important figures about the number of teachers trained before the enhanced community quarantine or before this, uh, before this uh, COVID pandemic. The Information and Communications Technology and the Educational Technology Unit has trained about 95,156 teachers in traditional face-to-face -face kind of interaction. Ito pong training ng mga 95,156 teachers na ito, hindi pa po dito kasama yung mga teachers na nag-conduct po ng mga school-based learning action circle, school-based professional development sessions sa mga kanya-kanya nalang eskwelahan. Ano po ba ang tinraining? Ano po ba ang pinaghusay ng mga guro? Dito po sa mga training na ito, 
nag-aral po o pinaghusay po natin ang kakayahan ng mga guro sa paggamit po ng open educational resources. Ito po yung mga kagamitan na magagamit ng mga guro for free and this is interactive. At ang kagandahan po rito, magagamit po ng mga guro ito miski wala pong internet connection. Mamaya po isa-isahin po natin ang different stages of this open educational resources. During the ECQ, ito na po yan, as of May 15, 2020, the number of additional teachers trained through webinars was 238,602. So with the use of webinars as our platform, nakagawa po tayo ng 238,602 teachers na na-train po natin. At ito pong training nila, kasama na po rito in preparation for the new normal classroom. And additionally, we have 14,154 private school teachers have also been trained. So good thing about this webinar, it is inclusive, open for all, and we are glad to announce na with the webinars that we have in the Educational Technology Unit, hindi lang po sa pang Pilipinas. Marami rin po tayong paguruan sa buong mundo, sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo na nakatune in po sa ating webinars. Kasi alam naman po natin, eto pong COVID-19 na naramdaman natin ngayon, hindi lang po ito sa Pilipinas. Sa buong mundo nararanasan ito. So kung dati, face to face, pati po sa ibang panig ng mundo, nakakaroon na po ng paradigm shift from face to face to online and distance learning. At yung mga guru po natin na mga, mga gurong Filipino po natin sa ibang bansa, sumasali po sila sa ating webinar session para po mapaghusay at madagdagan po ang kanilang kaalaman sa iba't ibang uri o pamamaraan ng pag-discuss o pagtuturo sa ating mga bata. In summary, about 39% of the total teaching force was trained on different webinars that focuses on the delivery of instruction using different modalities. And this is a big lift from the mere 11% as of March 11, 2020. Upon seeing this figure, this, uh, this figure is according to our head, uh, Mr. Mark Anthony C.C. Siya po yung nagbigay ng figure na yan. So, plus 28% ng ating teaching force ay naka-attend at napaghusay ang kanilang kaalaman sa different learning modalities at different platforms na pwede nilang matutunan upang makatulong sa delivery ng instruction. At Pinapaalam din po namin na ito pong mga teachers na ito, hindi lamang po sila umattend ng seminars. Sila po ay mga participants po namin na nagsubmit po ng output na hinihingi sa bawat webinar session. Kung nasa basic OER ka, meron kang requirements na kailangan isubmit at lahat po sila ay nakapag-comply based on our database. And... In preparation for this one, we need to revolutionize the education by means of empowering our learners. So, ayan po, sabi dyan, the future starts today, not tomorrow, primarily because nandyan na po ang COVID-19. Wala na po tayo magagawa sa COVID-19. Ang kailangan na lang po natin ay maging handa, paghandaan, at ipagtibay ang ating sarili para sa paparating na school year ngayong taong ito. And ang focus po natin ay ang mga guro. Because we need to empower our teachers in terms of their skills, of their techniques, and characters. Kung ang teacher ay matuturuan natin ng mga bagay na ito, sila ay magiging innovative teachers. Their passion for teaching will be ignited. And our goal is to transform our learners to a globally competitive learners by inspiring them to do more and to be the best that they can be. So this is a transformation process of our teachers. And we need to take into consideration some of the training phases na pwede nating pagdaanan. Tulad ng ginagawa po namin, hindi po siya biglaan, hindi po siya minamadaling training, meron pong different phases and different stages, parang leveling ng skills development ng ating mga guro. And according to Jason Silva, technology is of course a double-edged sword. 
fire can cook us, can cook our food, but also burn us. And according to Steve Jobs, technology is nothing. What is important is that you have a faith in people that they are basically good and smart. And if you give them tools, they'll do wonderful things with them. Isa lang pong ibig sabihin na ito. Sa panahon ngayon, halos lahat may access na sa technology. Halos lahat may access na sa internet. Ang kailangan lang po natin, gamitin natin ng tama at maayos ang mga available resources po natin para may deliver po natin ng tama yung gusto po natin ibigay sa ating mga mag-aaral. At ako personally, naniniwala po ako na ang mga teachers, pag binigyan natin sila ng trainings, pag binigyan natin sila ng platforms, pag in-empower natin sila after that particular webinar, yung mga teachers po natin, sila nang bahalang mag-explore kung paano pa nila gagamitin at gano pa nila pagyayamanin yung kanilang kaalaman sa mga ibinigay naming learning platforms. For the key stages in ICT skills, we have introduction, adoption, adaptation, appropriation, and transformational. As we all know, in this time of pandemic, we are now shifting to a new normal in education at ang puhunan ng mga guru para magkaroon sila ng paradigm shift to online and distance learning ay mapagyaman ang kanilang ICT skills. So, ito ang ginagawa natin to replace the traditional instructional materials with a digitized version to prepare teachers with the use of offline and productivity application tools essential to teaching to prepare teachers with the use of learning management system to support and create online learning modules and to enable teachers and learners to use different e-learning tools to support learning environment. And our last stage of ICT development is to develop new learning strategies and methodologies mediated by the power of learning devices. So dito po makikita po natin na Nagkakaroon po tayo ng proseso. It is a step-by-step -step process from basic to complex na kung saan nakikita natin na si teachers unti-unti ay napagayaman niya ang kanyang kakalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng ICT. Pero, let us always remember in, in transforming our educational system by traditional approach to a new normal in education, we need to face the following technological challenges. The first one is the digital gap. The digital skills, resistance to change, failure of personalized learning, migrants of technology, and connectivity. All of this pwede itong makaapekto sa pagkapahusay ng kaalaman ng ating mga guru. Pero ako ay naniniwala na tayong mga guro, kaya nating malagpasan ang mga challenges na ito upang maihanda ang ating sarili sa paparating na new normal in education. And with that, these are the professional development that we are trying to advocate from offline e-learning to online e-learning, enhance the insisting process by learning, relearning, and unlearning. And we need we have this concept of connecting the disconnected by concept, framework, and approaches, and foster creativity, change, and cooperation. At this point in time, we are now trying to blend offline and e-learning resources para mas makapag-deliver tayo ng quality, basic education for our learners. And these are the curricular supports, the support for curriculum and instruction. For offline and online e-learning, multimedia, we are trying to empower our teachers on how to create different learning resources in different file formats, pwedeng in a form of PowerPoint, in a form of uh, video, MP4, in a form of ebook, which is EPUB. So, as, as we can see, talagang different uh, learning platforms, different applications ang tinuturo natin para may pagkipilian ng ating mga guro. Assessment. Assessment will play an important role sa panahon ngayon. Magkakaroon din ng shape from how we assess our learners 
from traditional to new normal approach. Classroom management, because on this particular time, uh, in times of COVID pandemic, most of the time, virtual and distance learning ang approach natin. Supplementary materials, interactivity and productivity and skills enhancement. And we are trying to focus on the following, pedagogy and andragogy, the content, knowledge and virtues, and technology. For pedagogy, we have learning and innovation skills, for content, effective communication skills. For technology, transformation and media and technology skills. And for knowledge and virtues, life and career skills. Kung kapansin ninyo, meron po tayo dito lahat na offline e-learning modules starting from KA Lite down to Knowledge Channel and different, uh, uh, the different educational sites and learning platforms. Lahat pong ito. Uh, sa tamang panahon na ilalagay po natin sa DepEd Commons and it can be accessed by our learners, by our teachers, at ng ating mga magulang. And as a 21st century educator, you are expected to be adaptive to changes. Tulad ngayon, we are preparing ourselves para po sa pagharap sa new normal classroom. Sabi nga nila, ano man ang mangyari, kakayanin natin dahil tayo mga guru ay handa tayo sa gantong mga situations. Good communication skills, lifelong learning as a teacher, talagang habang tayo ay nasa profession natin, tayo ay natututo at natututo, lalo na ng iba't ibang learning modalities na pwede nating may apply sa ating klase. Visionary, Kailangan nakikita kagad natin yung mga pwedeng mangyari and we have we need to have plans kung paano natin ika-counter yung mga ganong situations. Transformer. When we talk about transformer, our ability to transform our learners kasi nga po, tayo ang nagtuturo sa ating mga mag-aaral at sa atin sila kumukuha ng kaalaman at wisdom na pwede nilang dalhin hanggang sa kanilang pagtanda. Collaborator. Sa ngayon kasi, we need to collaborate with one another. We need to share good practices, best practices na pwede nating maituro. Kasi alam naman natin, by sharing our good practices, may nakukuha tayong something new na pwede nating ma-apply sa buhay natin bilang isang guro. Leader of positivity and innovator. We need to innovate. We need to explore other options. And let's always remember Sa pag-explore natin ng other options, kailangan natin isipin yung availability ng resources at kung sino ang gagamit ng ating naiisip na platform. And with that, this is our Open Educational Resources or the DepEd Commons. Ito po yung uh, kinakonduct namin ng mga training. It has five stages, advanced program. On the advanced program, we are teaching our teachers on how to create their own learning materials using different authoring tools, mga applications for authoring, open source. So, meron tayo mga available resources na pwede nilang magamit, miski wala silang internet connection. Another one is advanced learning or advanced program on this advanced program. We are teaching them how to use learning management system and how to create AR and VR in education. For our proficiency program, we have ebook development and mobile app development. Currently, nandito na po tayo sa stage na to, nasa proficiency stage na po tayo, and we were able to train teachers, thousands of teachers, on how to create interactive ebook and how to create mobile application sa kanilang mga cellphone. And we have proficiency and the last one is the novice program. So let's discuss it one by one. For basic OER, we are empowering teachers on the use of different authoring tools. We have word search maker, crossword puzzle maker, hot potato, comics creator, and Wondershare quiz creator. In Wondershare quiz creator, it allows teachers to create their own 
their own interactive responsive quizzes and assessment that is teacher friendly. For word search maker, it allows the teachers to create their own word search activity for their learners in a short period of time. The output for this kind of application is in a JPEG format or, or picture format. That is a teacher nagtatagal ng isa tatlong oras sa paggawa ng word search, sa paggawa ng puzzle. Ngayon, with the applications that we have, in five minutes, makakagawa na sila ng mga word search and crossword puzzle para mapabilis ang kanilang paggawa at mas marami silang magawang learning materials. We also have Hot Potato. Hot Potato includes six enabling applications that helps you to create interactive multiple choice short answer exam, jumbled sentence, crossword, matching and ordering, and gap field exercises that is in an HTML format. So this is interactive approach wherein marami ng teachers ang empower and upon checking their work, very impressive ang mga nagawa ng teachers especially on the use and curation of interactive assessment. And we have the course lab. For basic OER, we also have the gamified, who wants to be a millionaire, wheel of fortune, and the hat. For the basic OER, we also provide offline e-library or offline library. I would like to share our experience lang po. Uh, last, since uh, August 2019, nag na po kami sa iba't ibang panig ng Pilipinas. nag po kami sa iba't ibang probinsya sa Pilipinas. At ang tinatarget po namin ay hindi po yung mga lugar sa probinsya na nasa bayan. Hindi po yung lugar na naaabot ng kuryente. Hindi po yung lugar na naaabot ng mga ng internet. Pinupuntahan po natin yung mga eskwelahan na considered as the last mile schools sa ating bansa. Ito mga last mile schools na to, ito yung mga eskwelahan na multi-grade, makeshift ang mga classroom, at ang tanging paraan lang para mapuntahan sila ay maglakad ng ilang oras. Nagpunta kami sa Lopez Quezon, nagpunta kami sa Rojas Palawan, nagpunta kami sa Pangasinan, marami kaming napuntahang probinsya, at isa lang ang goal namin pagpunta namin sa mga eskwelahan na tinuturing namin last mile school. We are empowering teachers on how to create different learning materials using different platforms. At awa naman po ng Diyos, sa tulong po ng United Nations Development Program, eto po mga eskwelahan na to, meron po silang mga computer sets, tablets, na tinatawag nating DepEd Computerization Program, na proyekto ng DepEd, at ito po ay gumagana sa pamamagitan ng mga solar panel sa tulong po ng United Nations Development Program. So sa bawat pagpunta po namin sa mga lugar na ito, sinisiguro po namin na bago kami umalis, napaguhusay namin ang mga guru kung paano gamitin ang mga bagay-bagay na kailangan nilang matutunan. Kung ano ang meron sa bayan, kung ano ang meron sa NCR, meron din sa mga last mile schools. Hindi pa man namin sila napupuntahan sa ngayon. Darating ang araw, mapupuntahan namin yan, lalo na pagdating pagtapos ng COVID-19. At sa bawat pagpunta namin doon, binibigyan namin sila ng mga offline library. Pag sinabi nating offline library, eto po yung mga resources na pwede nilang magamit. Pwedeng magamit ng mga bata, miski wala silang internet. Una na po ay yung mga FTP file. We also have Kiwix. And we also have Colibri. Ito pong FTP file, it is a combination of different online learning platforms. Halimbawa po is yung mga top 10 famous books, top 100 famous books, and different learning materials na pwede nilang magamit. If you are teaching primary grade, meron kami rito resources for how to teach beginner, beginning reading, how to teach yung mga middle level sa pagbabasa. So, it encompasses different learning modalities and it encompasses different stages of development. We also have Kiwix and Colibri. These are resources na ibinigay namin sa kanila, rich in content, and at nakaangkla po ito sa ating curriculum. 
And with the support of DOST, we are now starting with, I think this is the future plan, to include Starbucks sa ating mga library collections. For the advanced OER, we have the offline learning management system and the AR, VR, and education. Later on po, i-discuss po namin yung mga learning management system na available po. And for the proficiency, mobile application and ebook development for our learners. And these are other webinars uh, na kinakondak po ng Educational Technology Unit. We have Autodesk for Beginners, Photoshop for Beginners, Capacity Building of Teachers for the New Normal Classroom, G Suite for Education, Canva for Beginners and Graphic Design, Parenting Tips for the New Normal Classroom. As we... As we all know, dapat po ang approach ngayon is holistic. Lahat po ng mga nakalinya pong webinars ng Educational Technology Unit ay nakaayon sa pangangailangan ng ating mga guro. And if we're going to observe, hindi lang po guro ang binibigyan natin ng halaga. Pati po ang mga magulang ng ating mga bata na makakasama po nila sa pag-implement po ng distance learning ay ating ine-empower. Kasi po ngayon pong darating na May, Meron po tayong webinars on parenting tips for the new normal classroom. Meron po tayong imbitadong experts na pwedeng tumulong sa ating mga magulang. So it is a holistic approach para ma-address natin yung needs ngayong panahon na ito. Now, we have Deped Initiated Learning Platform. We have the LRMDS Portal. And LRMDS Portal... It is designed to support and increase distribution and access to learning, learning, and learning, teaching, and professional development resources at the region, division, and school cluster levels of DepEd. And LRMDS portals have the following features. First, it provides access to quality resources from the region, division, cluster, and school level, including information and quantity and quality and location of textbooks and supplementary materials and cultural expertise, access to learning, teaching, and professional development resources in digital format, and locates resources in print, format, and hard copy. Standard specification and guidelines for assessing and evaluating and acquiring and harvesting modification development and production of resources. So, ito pong LRMDS portal natin ay matagal na pong ginagamit ng ating mga guro. Ang may access lamang po nito ay ating mga DepEd teachers using their DepEd Gmail account. At ito po ay rich in content. Comes in different file formats po ang ating LRMDS portal. And recently, last March 15, I think, inilaunch na po natin ang DepEd Commons. Ano naman po si DepEd Commons? DepEd Commons is an online platform for school teachers to support distance learning modalities which can be accessed at https colon double backslash commons at deped.gov.ph precisely to continue the delivery of basic education to our children. As we all know, ang DepEd Commons po natin, open for all po siya. Pwede siyang gamitin ng magulang para turuan ang kanyang mga anak at ang kanyang mga minamahal na estudyante sa bahay Pwede siyang gamitin ng ating mga estudyante at pwede rin siyang gamitin ng ating mga guro. At kagandahan po sa DepEd Commons na ito, it has the following features. It is designed as a direct solution to give access to online review materials and open educational resources during class suspensions and other similar circumstances. These supplementary learning instructional materials will be used as an alternative forms in teaching and learning process which is different from the usual face-to-face -face encounter. And this is under the Digital Rise Program, wherein DepEd Commons can be accessed by public schools, by private schools, and alternative learning system, and also with our students enrolled in special education classes. And we are happy to announce that the DepEd Commons can be accessed for free using Globe and Smart SIM card. So, ito po, within the domain po ng DepEd Commons ay free. And if all links click and visited outside the DepEd Commons, domain will incur standard charges. And 
This is the Deped Commons total users from week one up to the last week. This is according to the Facebook page of our uh, Undersecretary for Administration, Yusek Alain Del B. Pasqua. Sa kanya po galing ang infographics na ito. From week one, now we have week seven as of May 14, 2020, meron na po tayong 7 million users ng ating DepEd Commons. So, ibig sabihin po talagang tinangkilik at patuloy na tinatangkilik po ng ating mga kaguruan, ng ating mga mag-aaral at ng ating mga magulang ang DepEd Commons at ang Learning Resource Management Development System. Ito pong mga learning platforms na ito ay ready-made bigay at gawa po ng Department of Education para gamitin po sa pag-aaral. Meron naman po tayong mga ready-made available learning resource management system na pwedeng ma-access ng ating mga mag-aaral. And at this point, imbitahan po natin ang ating mga ang ating mga butihing educational technology specialist sa educational technology unit para makasama natin sa ating sessions na ito. Sir Maj, Ma'am Weng, Hi, Sir Bads. Hello, Sir Maj. Hello, Hello Ma'am Weng. Kamusta yes, kayo? Mabuti Kamusta naman. Kayo? Ayun. So, okay naman, talagang, sir. Talagang nakaano tayo, ha? Talagang nakakote tayo lahat. So, ngayon oh, na may... Kaya kami sa iyo. Ayan. So, salamat. <laughs> By the way, papakilala ko nga po pala sila isa-isa. We have our educational technology specialist from Antipolo. We have Sir Mark Anthony Hamisal. We also have our educational technology specialist from Makati, Head Teacher 3 at Makati Science High School, Ma'am Rowena Andaya Reyes. At yan, sila Hello. po ay mag-share po sa atin ng kanilang mga experiences and different learning modalities na pwede nilang magamit o pwede nating makatulong sa ating mga guro. So, pwede mo ba akong i-share ng iyong mga konting tips or mga ginagamit natin na learning delivery platform, Sir Mark? Well, uh, yes, sir. Um, other than the use of uh, offline educational resources, we're also sharing mga iba-ibang uh, learning modalities like online, lalo na kinoconsider natin, sir, yung ating mga private schools din na of course mas kailangan at kailangan din talaga ng tulong ng ating Department of Education na uh, lalo na po yung maliliit na ating mga private schools. So paano nila may pagpapatuloy yung kanilang uh, pag-aaral yung mga lear learners nila? So with our trainings like LMS, mga online LMS or platforms, isa yun sa uh, sinishare natin sa kanila. Ayun, so talagang si Sir Maj, medyo marami siya yung teacher siya. So ayan, medyo because we are live, meron tayong mga konti external noise. So Ma'am Weng, kayo po, ano po ba yung ginagamit po natin sa ating klase before na feeling nyo applicable ngayong new normal sa ating educational system? Okay. So usually, ang ginagamit namin today for for the uh, new normal sa so darating na yun, changes na magaganap, gumagamit kami ng mga online del delivery mode like uh, number one is the Google Classroom because the school meron siyang domain so that's why uh, ginagamit namin to. to uh, number one is to protect the, the students since meron domain, ang mga papasok lang doon is yung mayroong uh, domain din. So, today, ginagawa na ngayon, uh, nakikreate na ng account for the incoming uh, grade 7 students. Ayan. So, yan po. Then, ina kinakapacitate namin yung mga teacher to learn how to use this platform. I, I mean, in enhancement na lang kasi uh, ginagamit naman talaga ito dati. Okay. So, Sir Maj, ikaw kasi ako, ang ginagamit ko talaga yung, ano, eh, yung model na natutunan ko rin sa ating mga training. So, akaso nga lang, yung model na ginagamit ko ngayon, kinonvert ko na siya into offline learning para mas marami ang makinabang. Pero hindi naman required. Karamihan pa rin sa atin, naka-offline pa rin ang kanilang learning resource management kasi alam ko, meron pang different platforms na pwede tayong gamitin. So, bigyan mo nga kami ng konting, ano sir, uh, konting overview. Ano ba si Edmodo? Pero mamaya pa natin siya showcase, sir, ha? Yes, uh, Edmodo, sir, is another type of uh, 
another uh, LMS or learning management system na ang good thing nito or advantage nito is we can uh, collaborate with uh, not just with the, your fellow educators but also with your students and most especially ang ating mga parents so they are stay we can stay connected to them pwede silang ma-update and at the same time yung uh, tinatawag din to na parang social learning platform kasi nga mukha siyang Facebook lalo na nung uh, na, na open siya or na offer siya way back 2008 so ayun, so ibig sabihin pala Sir Mark, no? etong ating Edmodo na to is available way back in 2008 pa. So ngayon, yeah. I think medyo i-expect na natin na etong Edmodo na to ay magagamit. Dahil una sa lahat, sa pagkakaalam ko, tama ba Sir Mark? Mas uh, applicable siya or sa elementary learners, applicable ang ating Edmodo? Um, so, actually, it's K-12, it's okay, applicable, okay. although kasi meron din mga professionals din na ginagamit nila sa Edmodo, may nabasa ako, ginagamit nila ito sa hospital kasi okay. yun yung way nila na communication. But uh, nasabi natin na preferably for elementary kung Philippine settings kasi okay. uh, hindi kailangan ng email address para makapag-create na account. So ayun, so tama yun. No? Binigyan consideration ni Sir Mark Anthony Hamisal yung availability ng Gmail account ng mga bata. So ngayon, tingnan naman natin, Ma'am Weng, ikaw, ano ba yung kinagamit mo po sa inyo pong klase na talagang nasubukan mo na na effective at talagang nakapagpataas ng academic performance ng mga bata natin? Ma'am Weng, nakamute po yata kayo. Okay. Sa, sa school namin, meron siyang ginagamit na Kuiper. Okay, okay po. So yung, yung Kuiper na yun, uh, intended for uh, grade 10 and also for the senior high school. Kasi meron na siyang mga video. Pero yes. kasi, uh, because of the sponsorship ng local government, so yeah. hatay up yun. Pero ngayon, since... Uh, hinahanda natin ang mga teachers sa mga iba-ibang klase ng modalities na kung saan ay gamay nila. Okay? okay. So, kasabay nun, ginagamit din namin, ginagamit talaga namin ang Google Classroom sa aming uh, pagtuturo at na-enhance yung mga bata, lalo na yung mga uh, mastery skills na tinatawag. So, pwede kasing uh, bigyan ng another lesson, ulitin, basahin, i-assess ang bata. So, kahit na Ang ginagawa ito, let's say, mga ginagawa ito after class or pag-uwi ng bahay, sinisat siguro at least mga isang oras, ganyan. Hindi naman yung babad na babad sa online. At syempre, meron kaming ginawa na dapat alam ito ng parents na ang mga bata ay mag-online for uh, additional mga enhanced learning. Ayan. Ganyan yung mga ginagawa. So talagang ginagamit siya. So ayun, napakaganda nung naipunto ni Ma'am Weng sa atin kanina na sa panahon ngayon kasi talaga kailangan natin yung support ng ating mga stakeholders at primarily ang unang mag magsusuporta sa atin dyan is the national government and then syempre ang ating mga LGU at ang mga barangay na isa sa mga kasama natin na nagpo-provide din ng mga possible solutions sa pagharap po natin sa new normal classroom. So ayan, so mamaya, uh, kita-kits ulit tayo mamaya para sa ating... Uh, discussion on different learning platforms. But to, for now, allow me to share with you some of the outputs ng mga teachers natin na pwede nating ipakita sa ating mga mag-aaral. So, ngayon po, I will showcase to you different works ng ating mga teachers. Unahin na po natin, ito po tinatawag natin na Wondershare Quiz Creator. So, Wondershare Quiz Creator, this is an interactive ebook assessment na pwedeng magamit ng mga bata at pwede rin siyang magamit ng mga teachers as an authoring tool. While opening our uh, ebook material or our interactive assessment, we will now the, I will now showcase to you this ebook na ginawa po ng ating mga teachers. I will try to open an ebook. So, ayan. For example, this one. Ayan. So if you're going to observe, 
we have different chapters here and this is a sample of interactive ebook from the first one what i need to know an overview about this module and we have an assessment and if you're going to observe on this assessment part students will answer interactive crossword for example number two when i click number two also called facets or sides this is so Spaces. And then, you answer number four. A space figure. And then square. If we're going to observe, on this particular ebook, it is very interactive. At nandito na siya lahat. Students can answer interactive assessment. And what's in? This is now the discussion. You have guided questions. As we all know, in discussing our lessons, kailangan integrated siya in different, uh, in different subject areas. And what's new? And for example, this one, good thing about this ebook. Ayan po, once you click this one, yung mga naka-blue po, meron po siyang lumalabas na mga definition and image. Is it important for us to include this feature? Basically, yes, kasi may mga bata po minsan na nahihirapan po silang alamin yung kahulugan ng bagay na yun. So, with the use of link, na ibibigay natin ang kahulugan. Halimbawa, hindi maintindihan ng bata ang three-dimensional. So, once, the, once kinlik ng bata, three-dimensional means having three dimensions such as height, width, and depth like any object in the real world. So, ayan po. And then, we also have this gallery. Ito po yung mga features ng ating Kotobi, ng Kotobi author, or ng ating e-book. Ito po yung sample output ng ating mga mag-aaral. And we also have, what is it? This is now the part of, we're in discussion na siya. Ayan, kung mapansin ninyo, para siya nag-lesson talaga, guided ang mga bata. There is a step-by-step -step process on how to perform this activity. And after discussing, syempre, magkakaroon tayo ng discussion. And if you're going to observe, naka-hyperlink po siya. Pag kinlik ng bata yan, magda-download po yung file. And then, pag nag-download yung file, mabubuksan po ng bata yung activity ng nila. So, pwede niya sagutan yan. Tatandaan po natin, ang ebook is intended for self-face learning. And then, meron naman po tayo rito for our summary, what I have learned, we can also insert picture videos. So, ayan po. Nakakapag-insert po tayo ng videos. It will play. Ayan. This is for summary about what is a cube. And kanina sa baba, how to find the surface area of a cube. We also have a certain video. So, ayan. So, if we're going to observe, in this particular ebook, it is all in one package na po na talagang si teacher, i-insert na lang po niya yung mga resources niya and pwede na siyang i-distribute o ibigay sa mga bata. This is for self-paced learning. And kung gusto mo na meron kang online activity, pwede rin po i-click lang si online activity. And then, ayan na. An external link will pop up. And for example, I created this using quizzes. Yung pong website ng quizzes, it is also an interactive uh, assessment tool na pwede maglaro ang mga bata. For example, let's try to demonstrate this one. Play. So, ayan. Nag-play po yung mga bata. Pwede magsagot ngayon dyan ang yung picture pwede palakihan and iron. So, ayan po. So, it is complete and wala na tayong ibang iisipin. Nakalink na siya and it can work sa ano man nating pwedeng gamitin. Length, width, and height. So, pagtapos na yung mga bata, pwede na siyang i-close. And then, punta na siya sa next one. Assessment. Good thing about this ebook, meron siyang built-in assessment. So, sasagot yung mga bata. Pag sumagot yung bata rito, meron kagad siyang immediate response. So, pag sinabmit ng bata, ayan, meron na kagad siyang 
response dun sa sagot ng bata. Your score is 5 out of 5. And lastly, we have additional activities. So, ayan po. Pwede yan, i-encode na ng mga bata yung kanilang sagot dyan sa tanong na yan. So, this is the beauty of e-book na meron po tayo. And napakaganda po nito kasi talagang all-in-one na siya na pwede na nating magamit. We also have e-books for our ALS learner na ginawa po rin ng EdTech unit. So, showcase ko lang din po yung e-book na ginawa po na for our ALS learners. So, tulad nga po ng sinabi namin, no, sa DepEd Commons, it is inclusive. Lahat ng learners, different kinds of learners, i-cater natin. And ito ay for our ALS learners. Ayan. Kung papansin ninyo, medyo okay siya. Okay siya talaga. And then we have this, your assessment. And kung mag na si teacher, ready na siya mag-lesson. Ayan, ang dami. Colored pa ang lumalabas. And then, pwedeng maglagay ng sagot ang mga bata dyan. And this one, ito po. Ayan, medyo gusto, di ba, ang mga bata minsan visual. Ano yung flatworms? May definition ka. Gusto nila makita. Once nakinlik ni bata si flatworms, yan, lalabas yung picture niya. So, it is very interactive na talagang medyo inisip na ni teacher ano yung mga pwedeng hindi maintindihan ng bata, inilagay niya na dyan. So, this is good thing about this one. Ayan, sasagutan ng bata. Pag nasagutan, pwedeng i-counter check using this answer key. So, this is yung good thing about this uh, this interactive ebook. So, kanina, sinabi ko naman, ang didiscuss naman natin ay ang ating learning management system. Ano nga ba yung learning management system? In the learning management system, the teacher can create their own assessment tool with the assessment that will cover different types of questions from multiple choice to, e to essay writing. So, tingnan natin ha, kung ano meron dyan kay, kay LMS. Ayan, pag nag-login ako, ito yung aking LMS. Ang klase ko ay English 6, for example. And then, pag pumunta ako sa my course, ayan, English 6. Ayan po. Meron siyang mga activities. For example, number one, let's see what you already know. Pag kinlik ng bata yan, Ayan. Pwede siyang ma-redirect sa another site. So, pinapakita ko na po yung, ano natin na yung ating LMS. Ayan po. So, nakita nyo, um, connected na naman siya to external source. And ayan. Ang topic ko po kasi ay elements of the story. So, sagot na ng mga bata. So, ayan po. Pag tapos na po yung bata doon, meron naman akong hinandang video lesson. So, for example, kung gustong aralin ng bata, meron akong video lesson dyan. And we also have worksheets. And then, let's remember and let's see what you have learned. Ngayon, ang ipapakita ko sa inyo, yung sa bata ngayon. Yung interface ng bata. Ayan. Ayan, nag-login na yung bata sa kanyang course. Ayan, punta ko ng courses niya. So, ayan po. So, dito, pag kinlik ng bata to kanina, mag -e exam siya. And then, etong let's learn. Pag kinlik naman niya to, magkakaroon tayo ngayon. Si teacher, may nilagay siyang video lesson. So, ayan o, yung video lesson ni teacher, siya mismo ang gumawa ng video lesson niya. Kasi, Sa mga trainings din namin, Hello, tinuruan din namin silang gumawa ng kanilang video lesson. So, for example, ayan. So, ayan. Meron siyang... So, yung video na to, self-paced learning siya. Ayan. Pag tapos na yung bata dyan, pwede na siya mag-jump sa next one. Worksheet. 
Ayan. Dito naman sa part na ito, meron dyang worksheets na ita-download yung bata. Pag kinlik ng bata yan, mata-download siya, and then sasagutan yung bata. So, hintayin lang natin. Sasagutan ng bata yan, and kung tapansin ninyo, ayan na. Ito na yung materials na sasagutan ng mga bata. So, ayan po. And then, dito nakalagay yung stories. Pwede puntahan ng bata yung stories na yan, yung link na yan. Pupuntahan niya lang yan, ikakopy niya lang. And then, babalik siya dito sa kanyang Moodle. And then, yan. Sa search niya yung stories na yan, ayan yung magiging baseline niya para masagutan niya yung activity kanina. So, ayan. Ito yung babasahin ng bata. So, hindi na kailangan ni teacher maglagay pa ng stories na baka makapirate siya. Ito, walang issue kasi dadiretso mo yung bata ron sa site and safe naman siya. And then, pwedeng isubmit ng bata yan. Halimbawa, tapos na yung bata. Pwedeng add submission. Nasagutan halimbawa ng bata yung gawa niya. So, isasubmit na ng bata sa teacher niya yung gawa niya. Pwede yung gawin. Pwede yung mangyari na magsasubmit yung teacher sa, bat sa bata niya. And then, punta ko ng downloads. Ayan. For example, sasubmit ko na siya. Upload this file. So, ngayon po, nagkakaroon tayo ng walkthrough dun sa mga different learning management systems na ibinigay po namin sa mga teacher at naituro po namin sa mga teacher. Ayan. Save changes. So, ngayon, nakapag-submit na yung bata ng kanyang activity. Si teacher, iti-check na lang ngayon sa kanyang system. After nyan, pwede na tayong mag- Summary, yung summarize ng ating lesson at si teacher, dahil nga new normal na, nagbago siya ng way na pag-aassess. Pag Time bound siya and then halimbawa number 3, ayan. Setting, it is the time and place in which the story occurs. Setting and then enter. So ayan lang po, sasagot lang po yung mga bata. It is the main character. Ayan. So, sasagot lang yung mga bata. After nyan, punta na sa assessment. Ayan. Ito yung pinakamahalaga, yung assessment. So, sasagot yung bata. Ayan. Once na sumagot yung bata, for example, sige, next. Next na lang ng next. Five items po ito. And then Next. 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 Sagot lang na sagot yung bata. And then setting. Halimbawa, finish attempt. So, pag nag-finish attempt na yung bata, ibig sabihin, isasubmit niya na. Submit all and finish. Submit all and finish. After nyan, ayan na. Magkakaroon na ng summary. So, ibig sabihin, nag-take si bata, 34 seconds na lang tinik yung exam. So, let's... Let's take a look at the statistics. So, 34 seconds lang nag-pick yung bata. Ang score niya, 3 out of 5. So, 60% lang yung nakuha niyang tamang sagot. And then, okay na yan. Ngayon, pag pumunta tayo ulit sa interface ni teacher, pag nakita nyo na yung grades, ayan po yung grades. Yan, makikita na ni teacher na may sumagot na. Ayan na. Meron ng dalawang batang sumagot. So, kanina, Itong studyante na to, 6 siya, nag-record. And kagandahan po nito, sa baba po nito, pwede tayong mag-lagay ng, mag-download ng report. Ayan, grade history. Ayan, kinlik ko yun. Show report. So, papakita sa akin yung report. So, si teacher ay, ayan na. So, ako papansin ninyo, ayan na, may mga sumagot. Ito yung graphical representation niya. And then, pag ginownload nyo yung Excel type, ayan na, lalabas na rito yung summary ng bata. At, makikita rin natin dito, meron siyang tinatawag na, lalabas na dyan yung overall average o yung mean, which is 8. So, ayan po. So, this is, 
the pictures of the LMS na tinuturo po namin sa aming mga teacher participants kasi po malapit na pong ilabas ang learning management system ng DepEd. So kaya ini-empower na namin ang teachers on how to navigate these things para naman pagdating ng panahon, sila naman po ang magna-navigate ng mga bagay na ito. And then, we also have this Google Classroom. So, Google Classroom is a free web service developed by Google for schools that aims to simplify creating, distributing, and grading assignments. The primary purpose of Google Classroom is to streamline the process of sharing files between teachers and students. The primary purpose of Google Classroom is to streamline the process of sharing files between teachers and students. So, at this point, let us now welcome our educational technology specialist from Akati Science High School, detailed at the Central Office at the Educational Technology Unit, Ma'am Ruena and Daya Reyes. Ma'am Weng? Yes, hello. Yan, Ma'am Weng. So, yes. pwede ba natin ipakita sa kanila yung interface ng Google Classroom? So, yes. ladies and gentlemen, Tingnan po natin kung paano po kinagamit ang Google Classroom as a learning management system in preparation for the new normal. So, Ma'am Weng, sa'yo na po okay. muna ang ating... So, at first, paggagamit kayo ng Google Classroom, kailangan nyo muna mag-login sa inyong account. So, yung ipapakita ko ang account na merong domain. So, since ang PNU naman merong at pnu.edu.ph, I'm showing you the domain, which is at makatiscience.edu.ph. So, uh, the, first, the first thing to do is go to the Google Ops. Yeah, then choose the Google Classroom. So, while loading, yeah, ipapakita, nyo sa, ipapakita sa inyo yung environment ng Google Classroom. So, as you can see, this is the finished product uh, na ginamit ko sa aking Google Classroom. Now, kung mag start ka, you have to click the plus sign. Then, para sa teacher, you need to create classes. Para sa students naman, you need to join class. Now, let me show you what you're going to see if you're going to create classes. So, pag mag-create ka ng class, dapat uh, ilalagay mo yung, yung uh, class. Let's say, uh, the name of the class is the ICT class. For this example lang, ha? Then, the section. Bawa, mabuti yung section. Para makita lang natin. Then the subject, let's say, uh, let's say math, mathematics, subject. Ito ay grade 10, the class, grade 7, let's say. Then room, let's say room 301. So, yan yung uh, the usual na ginagawa ni teacher. Okay? Then, yeah, yan yung the usual na ginagawa ng teacher. Then, we're going to see, this is the example class kapag nakapag-create ka na ng class. So, for example, this is the, the science class. May makikita kang stream, classwork, people, and grade. Dito sa stream, uh, makikita mo yung class code. So, itong class code na to, click mo lang yan, pwede mong ibigay sa bata. Okay? So, mag-join na sila doon by entering their email email at uh, by uh, logging sa kanilang uh, email account then mag-join class ilalagay nila yung kanilang uh, class code tapos additional dito kapag may domain ka you can use the google meet para uh, at least meron kang time to see your students kahit na distance learning so automatic na yan nag-a-apply nag na yan then, dito sa stream, ipop, uh, dito mo ilalagay yung mga announcement mo. Like sa Facebook, kung gusto mo silang kamustahin. Hello class, how are you? You can post something and then the students can reply. And also, you can put here your mga week, uh, week lesson. Lalagay mo dyan, week lesson. Ano yung objective mo for today? What kind of activity that they're going to do? So, ito yung gamit ni stream. Ilalagay lang lahat, anything, announcement. Now, ano naman makikita sa classwork? Sa classwork, makikita nyo, meron siyang uh, mag-create ka. Now, on this example, meron akong prepared na module that I've already created. So, dito, 
sa create class, once you click that, makikita mo na yung assignment. Pwede kang mag-create ng assignment. Pwede kang uh, maggawa ng uh, assessment. They call it quiz assessment. Pwede kang magbigay ng question. So, if you want to do uh, something, a reflection, uh, mag-post ka lang ng question that students will uh, reflect kung ano yung mga activity na or questions na ginagawa mo. Then, the materials, let's say you can use this if you're a teacher in science, you can do this. Yung mga laboratory experiment o mga worksheet. Now, yung reuse naman, you can use this uh, reuse post, you can edit. Uh, yung reuse post mo lang, i.e. edit mo lang, pwede na yun. Then, topic, you can uh, do topic all about, depende sa kung anong topic na gusto mo i-discuss. So, all in all, yun yung ginagawa ni teacher. Pinagsama lang ko sa classwork. So, as you can see, ayan, yan yung mga sample. So, everything, yung tabaw ni teacher, dyan mo ilalagay. Okay? So, people. So, ito yun. Pagka sa people, makikita mo, ang Google Classroom, pwede siyang uh, project-based learning. Let's say, uh, pwede kang mag-join mag ng teacher kung gusto mo na Halimbawa, parehong grade 10 yan o grade 7. So, pareho kayong mga teacher ng mga estudyante na to. You can collaborate. Okay? So, you can collaborate. Depende sa topic ninyo. Kung gusto nyo gamitin yung uh, mga existing lesson na uh, pwede naman na i-collaborate, you can add your, uh, you can add or you can invite teacher na pwede mong makakollaborate. Now, sa pag-add ng students, you can add students by, kanina yung pinakita ko sa, sa stream, you can give the class code or simply you can add or you can invite students by uh, entering or uh, entering their email address. Okay, so me, ang ginagawa ko since class ko naman yun, I give the class code. Pero if you want, gusto nyo mag-type or copy-paste from their email, you can do that. So dalawa yung option nila. And also, ito na yung, for example, this is my students. So, itong mga sojante ko na to, pwedeng, pwedeng i-invite ng kanilang version. So, click, click mo lang yan, then dapat i-input mo yung email address ng kanilang mga parents. Okay. So, di ba gusto natin ka-partner ang parents sa distance learning? So, maganda kapag gagamit tayo ng uh, Google Classroom kasi we can invite uh, the version or the parents. Now, paano naman kapag ang bata ay medyo makulit or nagpo-post siya ng something? Ito, like, let's say for this one, click mo lang yan. Yung action dito, you can personally email the students kung makukulit sila. Okay? Pwede mong i-reprimand. Now, or kaya kung sobrang kulit ka man, you can remove this one. But syempre, we love our kids, pwede natin silang immute. Kapag na-immute natin sila, let's say the students bully-bully sila, pwede natin immute sila. So, what will be the function? Kapag minute mong students can still submit work, other students won't see it. Uh, can reply to classmate work, uh, can comment, or uh, post. So, ibig sabihin, nag-reprimand na sila, but still, they can submit their work. So, mimute mo lang yan, then ano yung makikita mo once na nag-mute ka? Pag nag ka, ayan, may mag appear na parang volume. Ibig sabihin, hindi na siya makakapost pa ng something. Okay? So, kung mabait naman na siya, gawin mo lang. Kung sorry na, gawin mo, ibalik mo lang. Kung paano mo siya ginawa, click, then unmute. Okay? Then, unmute mo na. So, ayun yung uh, kapag ang bata ay nagbubuli-buli. Okay? So, ano naman makikita natin sa grade? Sa grade naman, ang makikita natin, uh, let's say, uh, may example, may mga example na ng mga akong mga nagawang quiz. Okay? So, dito, uh, kailangan yung mga ginawa mong quiz, automatic, magkakaroon siya ng, uh, automatic pag silabmit mo na, silabmit na ng bata, tapos i-review mo, kailangan ibalik mo sa kanila, automatic, uh, magkakaroon na siya ng grades. Okay? So, let's say, halimbawa, ito, view submission. So, click natin yung view submission. Ano ba yung sinab sinabit ng batang yon So, for this example, uh, kasi nag-submit siya ng, ng Google, ng uh, quiz. So, nandiyan yun. Na makikita natin sa view. Then, we're going to return that. Then, ayan na, makikita mo. Every time na may ginagawa kayo, kailangan ibalik sa bata para makita natin yung kanilang progress. So, for example, ayan. Yan yung mga sample na ibinigay na quiz. Tapos, since nag-quiz na yung bata, automatic mag appear na yung grade. 
So, ayan yung kinagandahan. So, syempre, malilesa lang yung work ni teacher. Basta don't forget to submit para makita ni bata kung anong score niya. Although nakikita naman ng bata yung score niya, pa nag-quish sa Google, uh, uh, Google Forms, pero it is uh, duty ng teacher na ibalik sa bata. Then afterwards, kapag nabalik na, automatic na magkakaroon ng grade, then you can, uh, let's say, ang students na ay good job sa kanyang test, pwede mo, pwede mo siyang bigyan ng private comment. Okay, so ayan yung kinagandahan siya. Now, so, balik tayo sa ating uh, classroom. Okay? So, ayan. So, yan yung mga example. So, automatic. So, may grade siya kasi naibalik na natin. So, yan yung kinagandahan. Then, also, dito, kapag meron kang ginawa, let's say, halimbawa, pwede dito yung mga, uh, yung sa term ng mga, let's say, nagbibigay ka ng classwork, nagbibigay ka ng uh, activity na ang bata ay wala lang ako example for now, uh, yung parang malaman mo kung ang bata ay may ginawa siyang kalokohan, nag-copy-paste lang siya sa internet. So, pw pwede yun makita. Okay? So, pwede makita siya. Let's say, halimbawa, try, try lang natin itong edit So, this one is sample. So, ito yung kinagandahan. Yung module na ibibigay ko, meron siyang instruction. And also, this one is gawa ni Google Docs. So, dito, put, you can add from your drive or give the direct link if you have additional reference or if you have additional file na papasagutan sa bata. So, pwede mo silang higyan ng mga file or they can watch directly to the YouTube. So, ayan yun. Pagka mag-create ka, so ayan yung mga uh, G Suite application na pwede natin gawin. Okay? So, ito, maganda dito, Meron siya mga choices. The, the students can view the file or the students can edit. Bibigyan mo siya ng authority. Okay? Kung gusto niya i-edit o kung gusto lang i-view yung file. Tapos dito, meron siyang rubric. Okay? So the teacher, let's say if the teacher give yung mga essay type, so syempre pagka mag-check ka, dapat meron kang rubric. Doon mag-base kung ano yung rubric na ginawa ng teacher para hindi mo yung isa-isa-isa-isa-isa. Okay? Okay? And also, ito yung sinasabi kong originality report. So, malalaman kung nag-plagiarism ang bata, kung saan nakuha yung site, at kung, kung ano yung mga site na pinuntahan na. And also, meron din siyang suggestion na mga site na pwede niyang puntahan kung meron siyang mga ginagawang research. Yun. So, yun yung mga uh, maganda dito sa Google Classroom na meron siyang domain. But kung wala namang domain, you can use your personal uh, Gmail. But the thing is, yun na lang, medyo may konting manual. But okay pa rin naman. Okay? So that is the environment of the Google Classroom. And also dito sa setting. Don't forget sa setting, so meron siyang yung class code, pwede mong uh, kung pwede mong i-reset kung halimbawa kung class code ang binibigay mo, tapos yung mga batang mga ulit, pwede natin i-reset para mag-iba yung class code. Okay? Pwede display, copy, o pwede nang wala na what is able kasi gagawin mo, mag-join ang bata, ikaw ang mag-join using their email address. Okay? So, ano pong mga makikita natin? So, dapat po, naka-enable, enable, and also, this is the, ito yung maganda. Magkakaroon ka ng Google Meet link. So, anytime, pwede, pwede kayong mag uh, face, meet, pwede kayong mag-meeting online. Okay, kasama na siya sa Google Classroom. And also yung grading, ano ba yung gusto mong makita? Merong overall grade, may total point, merong weighted by grade. Me, I'll do the total points. Then, pwede mong, pwede ka pang mag-add ng grade kung marami ka mga, mga quizzes na ginagawa. Okay? So, pwede, anong category? So, meron siyang default, that is 100, but you can change this one. Depende sa test mo. Then, click mo lang yung save. Okay? So, that is the environment ng uh, Google Classroom. And also, meron kang Google Calendar. So, makikita mo yung mga uh, list to do. And also, ang pinakamaganda, lahat ng ginawa mo ay nakakompile sa isang class drive folder. So, pag click mo yan, lahat, you can see, lahat ng ginagawa mo sa isang klase mo lang na create, lahat yan nando doon sa isang folder. The good thing is very organized siya. So, yan. So, yan yung mga makikita mo. Okay? So, that is the environment na Google Classroom. Okay? So, Sir Bunch, yan lang ang pwede kong uh, ma mapigay as a takeaway in using the Google Classroom.
Okay, Mong Wing, ba? napaka, Mong Wing, napakaganda ng Google Classroom talaga, no? So, kanina napakita mo yung features dyan, di ba? Alam naman natin na sa DepEd, in our schools, we are advocating for the, uh, child-friendly school, and mm. we have this anti-bullying committee. So, pinakita mo kanina, ma'am, na talagang halimbawa yung bata, meron siyang unnecessary actions. Talagang pwede mo siyang immute. Tama po, ma'am? Yes, pwede siyang immute. But still, makakapag-submit pa rin siya ng mga requirements. Pero hindi na siya makakapag-post ng something na hindi maganda sa ibang mga kaklase. Ayun. Pero ma'am, di ba, sabi niyo nga po, kung meron siyang gustong i-message sa inyo, mas kinakamute siya, pwede kanyang i-message and pwede mo rin siyang i-message. Yes. Yes. So, Oo, kaya lang, hindi na siya makakapag-post sa mga negative yes. comments. So, ibig sabihin, para ka na rin nagkaroon ng classroom management kasi na-mute mo yung mga bata. At isa pa, magandang feature din, ma'am, no, na tinuruan natin yung mga bata na huwag lang basta-basta kuha ng mga essay type na mga yeah. question, kumukuha sa internet. So at least yan, meron siyang parang plagiarism test na makikita talaga yeah. kung saan kinuha. Tama po ba, ma'am? Tama. Pero so, kahit na na-detect nila, na, na-detect nila kung na, nakuha ito sa site, magsasuggest pa rin naman sila ng mga site na kung saan pwede nilang makuha. And also, yung mga resources, sinuturuan sila kung paano sila mag-a-assign ng mga reference. Pwede uh, yung mga appetite, mga ganyan, M- MLA type, yun. Ituturo yes. sa kanila. Kung mag natututos talaga sila. At ako, yes. yung personal takeaway ko rito, Ma'am Ruena, before I let you go pa, pansamantala, kasi mamaya magkita-kita ulit tayo, ang takeaway ko lang dito, Ma'am, no? Sa teacher, kahit ano, kahit, kara, kahit gano'ng karami ang gawin nyo, kahit gano'ng karami activities ang gawin nyo, nasa drive siya. So kung halimbawa, next year, yes. gagamitin mo ulit, available lang siya sa drive. Tama po, Ma'am Weng? Yes. Yun ang maganda. Kasi every, every classwork na pinost mo, assignment, this assignment, nandun doon siya sa drive. And also, ang mga bata, hindi siya makakaligtaan. Uh, kasi may mga things to do. Let's say, pag in-assign mo na merong time at kung kailan ang deadline, mag a yun, uh, automatic talaga mag a yun. So, wala nang, wala nang dahilan para makalimutan pa nila. Ayan. Okay. So, ayun ma'am, no? So, sa ngayon, dalawa na ang ating nadidiscuss na learning platforms na pwedeng magamit. Una, yung learning management system powered by Moodle. And ngayon naman, ay yung Google Classroom by G Suite Education kasi halos lahat ng teacher may deped.gov.ph na account. So, magagamit nila na magagamit yung Google Classroom. So, for now, Ma'am Weng, magkapaalam muna ako sa'yo. Mamaya, magkikita-kita ulit tayo. At this okay. point, thank you, Ma'am Weng. At this point, let us welcome Welcome. our educational technology specialist from Antipolo City, Mr. Mark Anthony Hamisal, and he will discuss to us another learning management system or a learning platform called Edmodo. Good evening, Sir Mark. Good evening, evening, Sir Bads. Ayan, so... Go na. You discuss to us about Edmodo. All right, so... Edmodo is another option na pwede nyo uh, uh, i-check and uh, consider as one of your learning management system. So just log in to edmodo.com and makikita ninyo meron kagad sila nag-prompt na toolkit para sa mga gagamit kumbaga at sa uh, RMI at a uh, material na pwede nyo i-review if you're going to use Edmodo. So it's for free. If you can manage your class, engage your students, and napakadali lang siyang gamitin. So maraming instructions na nakikita sa kanilang website. And if you sign up, makikita natin na meron kang tatlong option. You have the teacher account, the student account, and the parent. So we will focus on the teacher account. But ang exciting dito at nakakatuwa nga ay we have the parent account wherein we can communicate to our parents kung ano na yung nangyayari sa ating Uh, learners and yung update sa kanila. So, I was assigned to share yung ating yan, teacher account. So, ayan. Ito, Sir Bads, ito yung ating uh, user interface when we log into the new Edmodo. Ayan, no, nakalagay na new Edmodo. Kasi before, nung na, una ko itong na-meet way back 2016, nung ako ay nagtuturo or naging isang trainer, technical trainer sa isang company na nag-offer ng solutions to private schools, um, specifically iPads, ay isang app na tinuro namin ay ang Edmodo. So, 
dati color blue pa yan, talagang kamukha niya yung ating social media, which is Facebook. Kaya tinawag siyang social learning platform. So, as you can see, may mga menu tayo na home, classes, discover, library, and messages. Kung kanina si Mami, Mami Weng ay may stream, ito naman ay para talaga siyang Facebook or home po ng uh, profile Facebook mo or homepage na yung Facebook. So, pag sinelect natin yung ad interest, halimbawa ikaw ay teacher sa math, science, o kung ano man yung interest mo no, na subject. So, update lang natin to. Philippines. Ayan. Right, so, ayan, kuwari Calabarzon, dahil nandito ako sa Calabarzon, taga-Antipolo, hello po sa mga teachers Antipolo. So, pili ka lang ng at least na interest mo, and then save. So, makikita mo na yung mga uh, professional uh, teachers din around the globe na parehas mo ng interest. So, sabi ko nga, para siyang Facebook. Ayan, so marami yan kung marami ka na-select. And you can also select different hashtags. And then pag kinilig mo yan, lalabas na rito yung mga iba-iba mong uh, iba-ibang mga professionals or other educators na interested din doon sa uh, parehas mo na interest or mga subjects na uh, you are belong to. So again, other than you can share your thoughts here with other teachers, you can also filter it kung ang gusto mo lang makita ay yung mga class activity mo. You can also filter it kung ikaw yung nag-author or kung ano yung mga type lang na gusto mong makita. Like test or like uh, assignments, posts, quizzes, or kung ano yung mga na-post mo. So, alimbawa, ito yung pinost ko sa aking uh, class na etiered modo class. Uh, ito yung bago lang din sa kanila, yung parang uh, uh, how you empathize to your learners kung kamusta na sila, uh, or how the how the uh, how they are feeling today so parang ganoon so merong ganyang features si Edmodo so punta tayo dito ngayon sa ating left na dashboard or left na menu so as you can see uh, bago lang tong profile na to kasi malawala na yung original ko na isa kong account so i advise medyo gamitin ninyo ang inyong personal account kasi once na umalis ka dun sa company na pinagkinamitan mo ang sarili mo na ginamitan mo ng ganitong platform definitely hindi mo na mahirap na ma-open ulit kaya dapat uh, I suggest na uh, personal account. Although may mga may account si Edmodo for um kumbaga may may premium account kumbaga for district or for uh, mga paid na account but definitely most of the essential tools ay for free ay available. So again, para siyang Facebook. So you have a profile picture, may profile ka about your school, makikita mo yung about yourself, interest, social links And ang nakakatuwa dito is meron din siyang gamified na badges, no? parang gamification. So may mga badges din na ma-achieve ma si teacher. So makikita mo yung mga posts mo, mga resources mo. Ayan. So ding. So resources, connections, kung sa schools, na community ninyo. Ayan. So other connections mo with other uh, educators and yung community ninyo like yung school ninyo ay magkakaroon din parang sariling school page. And then your progress. So ito yung mga yung menu as a teacher. Ayan. Right? So makita mo kung ilan yung students mo. Again, this is just a sample account. Right. So and then makita mo rin dito sa left side yung mga classes na meron ka sa, uh, sa school mo and even yung mga professional learning networks mo or yung groups. And then mentioned ko kanina yung hashtag. And then sa right side naman, yung mga conversations, so talagang para siyang uh, social media na nakikita mo ano yung mga in ngayon sa education. Like yan, mga blended learning, mga professional development, mga mixing things in art history. So pwede nyo rin i-check. So now let's proceed to the next menu which is the classes. So, similarly with the Google Classroom, meron din siyang classes and ganun lang din siya kadali. You have the option to create a class and you have the option to join a class. So, let's take for example, once I created the, a class, so halimbawa itong class na to, meron din siyang code. 
ang kaibahan lang kapag kinlink mo kay uh, Google Classroom to ay malaki siyang nagpa-flash. Ito naman, meron siyang share class code and you have the option to unlock the code and lock the code. So, alimbawa, yung klase mo ay kompleto na. Alimbawa, 45 yung learners mo. So, pwede mo na siyang i-lock yung code para wala nang pumasok or mag-add pa na learners. You can also uh, share by a using a PDF file. So, i-print mo lang itong PDF, PDF file na to, and then i-post mo sa classroom mo and then your learners can scan it or just can copy it para kung wala silang internet or mobile uh, internet, pwede nilang sa bahay sila mag-enroll. And you can also invite through email. So, you have three options, no? You can share a class code, share PDF, and you can invite via email. Ayan. And then, ito na yung pinaka- uh, uh, page naman ninyo as a class. So, you can also filter it by uh, me. Kumari lang, kung filter mo lang is kung ano lang yung mga pinos mo. And, ayan. So, you can also share or attach here file or a poll or yung wellness check. Ito yung sinabi ko kanina na uh, to check kung kamusta na yung mga learners mo. And it's something na kailangan nating i-develop, lalo na sa uh, next na experience natin ngayon, is the relationship to our learners. So yan, pwede ka mag-post ng uh, gusto mong uh, idea or assignment to other welcome class. And ang kagandahan nito is you can customize your text. Ito yung mga pwede mong i-format ng text mo. So you just copy ko ano yung format na yan at ito yung magiging result niya. Right? So something like that. And so you can also attach materials from your library. So kung ang kay Mami Wing ay Google Drive, with this platform, meron ka rin option for OneDrive and Google Drive. So for your Microsoft users, you have the OneDrive. And for the Google users naman, it's the Google Drive. And you also have your own library. Yeah. All right. Close that then. Close. All right. So on the other uh, menu naman ang ating uh, sa left side, we have the folders. So nandiyan yung mga files natin and kung sino yung mga members naman or mga learners natin na nandito. As you can see, kay Mommy, meron ding uh, invite your parents. Dito naman you can connect with the parents. So pwede mo silang i-contact or i-email. Ayan, so you can also add your uh, co-teachers here and may tayo mga pending members mo ng iyong ng iyong class, alright? So you can also create a small group. So alimbawa, may small groups ka for your uh, sa classroom. Definitely, yung mga officers mo sa classroom or yung magigaling mo na talents na talented na learners, so pwede mo silang i-group there. So other than the class management, makikita mo rin dito yung menu for what is due. So alimbawa, meron kang mga quizzes dito. Kung na-review mo na siya, papasok na siya dito sa review. Kumbaga, na-approve mo yung score na nila or okay sa'yo yung nakita mo na, na grade. Kumbaga, na-record mo na. And then you also have the schedule. Next is the progress. So progress naman na yung class, makikita mo rito yung iyong uh, parang gradebook mo. So alimbawa, yung mga binigay mo na score sa ginawa mong quiz ay makikita dito sa gradebook. And na nakakatuwa rito dahil may halong social learning and gamification ay ina din yung elements ng awarding of badges. So pwede ka mag-award ng badge, kumari add ng badge. Pili ka lang doon. So halimbawa, hard worker. So add badge to this group. So mamimili ka na lang sa mga students mo kung sino yung sa tingin mo ay talagang hard worker doon sa klase nila. So it kind of, it kind of encourage na motivation and at the same time, uh, uh, Kung hindi naman uh, talagang mag-co-compete uh, but at the same time na uh, you build something na kailang to look forward to na ah, kailangan kong magsikat kasi gusto ko yun makakuha din ako ng badge na gano'n. So something like that. And nakakatuwa rin sa it modo is it's packed with different uh, materials na pwede magamit ni teacher like yung mga games. No? Pwedeng i-share yan ni teacher and then pwedeng si bata ay maglaro pero at the same time natututo. Natuwa ako dito sa fireworks kasi it's like uh, synonyms and then sa math naman maraming uh, it's right. Maraming um, topics and the exercises na kung saan nagigames yung bata pero at the same time ay natututo siya about the concept about uh, 
uh, the coin na mag add similar ano yung equivalent nito na fraction, something like that. So marami siya, you can explore it, and it's for free. So yan, no? sabi ko may operations, measurements and data, geometry, and fraction. So you can start exploring that. So nakakatuwa, maganda yan. And may mga videos din, uh, where yan, 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 student focus news, so mga news wherein the learners can watch lalo na kung ito ay specific and makaka-augment ng kanilang pag-aaral. So, mga learnings na kailangan nila matutunan. Yan. So the library, of course, ito yung sinabi ko kanina, dito lahat nakalagay yung mga materials mo as a teacher. And then it also has the messages or message na menu. So sabi nga, it's a social learning platform din. So pwede mo makapag-communicate ka with your learners and send them private messages. Alright? For the search button naman, you can search Halimbawa, uh, science. Ang nakakatuwa dito sa search button na to is you can find result, all results. You can see posts related to science. Talagang collaboration siya with other teachers around the globe. Yung mga outputs nila, yung mga gawa nila, ay pwede mong i-share dito at makikita mo. You can connect with other educators. You can see resources related to the topic that you can uh, even use for free. And you can see different pages that wherein you can follow and can connect with. So ito ay talagang maganda for lalo na sa mga young learners natin kasi nga lalo na yung gamification and badges and I recommend the use of it model for that uh, for those type of learners. Lalo na yung talagang gusto yung gamification and social learning. All right, sir Bats. Salamat for sharing us your knowledge about the use of it model. So sir, parang ano no? Para ko ba pansinin natin, similar lang din siya kay Google Meet, maganda rin, ay kay Google Classroom, maganda rin siya. So, yung approach, medyo maganda rin. And kung pansinin natin, bound talaga yung bata on that particular site lang. So, wala ng external site na pwedeng gamitin ang bata. So, ngayon, sir, much, simbitahan natin ngayon on screen si Ma'am Rowena Reyes. Ayan. So, Hi. ayan no, so parang, yes, bato na tayo rito. So, ayan. Uh, parang sa, sa panahon ngayon, talagang we are now entering a new normal in education. So talagang kailangan nating mag-adopt, kailangan nating tanggapin ang realidad na nandyan na yung COVID-19. And as a teacher, it is our mandate to teach our learners, to teach their minds, to touch their hearts. And at the end of the day, we need to transform their lives. So, Ma'am Weng, ano bang pwede nating maging last words to our viewers for this webinar session about uh, our preparations for the new normal? So, yung mga preparation na pwede nating ihanda, since lahat naman po ay nakalood ng mga webinar, so I encourage to teacher the, the embrace of the use of technology kasi hindi naman siya mahirap. Kailangan lang natin i-manage yung ating time at kung ano yung ating nakagisnan, pwede, pwede naman. Kaya lang sa ngayong uh, new normal, from the word new normal, meron tayong kakaiba o bagong gagamitin para still ma-engage pa rin natin ang ating mga students. Hindi naman tayo mawawala bilang isang mga guro, but still nadagdagan lang ng paggamit ng technology. Kasi we need to protect our students and also the teacher. So that's why at the end of the day, teacher pa rin tayo. Yun nga lang, na iba lang yung ating modalities sa pagtuturo. There are a lot of modalities that we need to uh, use depende na kung gaano mo kagamay ito. Kaya sa mga panahon na ito, we need to practice, we need to explore, embrace kung ano yung mga pwede mong gamitin, kung ano yung na-master mo na na skill. So, better to explore than never use it. Okay? Yes, so, yeah. I like that point, Ma'am Wayne. No? It's better to explore kesa wag magamit. Kasi libre yan eh. Kasama yan sa mga perks natin of being yes. a deaf teacher. So, Mang Weng, salamat. So, ikaw naman, Sir Mark Anthony Hamisal. Any last words or message to our viewers for this PNU Talks? Alright. So, again, maraming salamat, Sir Bads, for inviting me. And, uh, masishare ko sa ating mga fellow educators. Sabi nga ni Mami Weng, huwag kayo matakot. And at the same time, siguro, Ang ano natin, challenge dito, alam natin dapat as a teacher, we need to be adaptable, flexible. Alam natin yan, ano, na itong nangyayari ay uh, this is just temporary but 
it's a great way then yung positive side is nakikita natin na ang lahat ay nagtutulong-tulong hindi lang mga teachers but also our parents lahat ng mga nasa taas sa our government agencies ay lahat ay gumagawa ng paraan kumbaga para mapagpatuloy pa rin ang pag-aaral and my advice to my fellow educators dapat uh, ready tayo wag may willing tayong matuto and for our learners natin wag natin silang uh, kumbaga just full gamitin natin di lang we need to build relationship no we need to build mas mag-reflect tayo mas ano gaano ko kakilala yung mga learners ko ano yung platform na available sa kanila kasi hindi po pwedeng katulad na ito Google Classroom or Edmodo itong gagamitin natin without even knowing kung ano ba yung need ano ba yung available doon sa bata sa family nila so we need to build the relationship first sa ating mga learners okay Sir so maraming maraming salamat Sir Match and Ma'am Weng na siguro uh, all of us will agree pag sinabi ko na talagang maraming learning resources na maraming learning resources na pwede tayong gamitin maraming mga available interactive learning resources din na pwede tayong gamitin and at the same time may mga learning management system na available na pwede rin natin gamitin at the end of the day what is important is our uh, relationship with our learners lalo na ngayon virtual kadalasan we need to condition our mind na talagang virtually minsan magkikita tayo ng mga bata so kailangan ma-establish natin yung good relationship with our learners and to be able for us to establish that good relationship kailangan pumili tayo ng the best platforms platform na pwede nating gamitin or anything na pwede nating magamit tulad na sinabi ko we are providing you we at the we at the ICTS at the unit we are providing trainings for the teachers we are empowering teachers on how to use different ICT related materials and how to prepare for the new normal so yung hamon na lang sa mga teachers is to select the right and appropriate meta- methodologies and learning modalities na applicable sa ating locality na kaya nating i-deliver at confident tayo tigit sa lahat at the end of the day ang ating end dapat doon ay makatulong tayo sa ating mga estudyante to become a globally competitive learners. So again, maraming maraming salamat Ma'am Rowena Andaya Reyes and Sir Mark Anthony Hamisal for for accepting my invitation to deliver your expertise on your chosen field. Again, maraming maraming salamat and thank you for sharing your knowledge. Now, let us go back to our presentation. With all the things na nangyayari sa Pilipinas at sa buong mundo, lahat tayo apektado, lahat tayo nakararanas ng kakaiba sa nakagawian natin. In the context of education, in consideration with COVID-19 situation, we need to consider this quote by UNESCO in 2018, Education cannot wait. If learning stops, we will lose human capital. And... As we continue our learning, as we prepare for the new normal in education this August 2020, huwag po kayong mag-alala, bago po magbukas ang klase, isinasaisip po ang kapakanan at ang kaligtasan ng ating mga guro, ng ating mga mag-aaral, at ng ating mga magulang at iba pang workforce ng DepEd upang mas maging smooth po ang academic year 2020 to 2021 sa taong ito. Lagi po nating iisipin, ano man ang mangyari, isa at unang-una sa lahat iniisip namin ang kapakanan ninyo ng mga bata at ng iba pang uh, stakeholders ng kagawaran ng edukasyon. At lagi ko nga sinasabi sa aking mga seminars pag nag-deliver ako ng message, the road to success is always under construction. I know all of you will agree pag sinabi ko na ang nararanasan natin ngayon bago, hindi tayo sanay, kailangan nating uh, mag-adopt, kailangan nating tanggapin yung realidad ng buhay. Lalo na ngayon, in the context of education, we need to prepare ourselves, we need to prepare uh, yung sarili natin holistically, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, physically ang pinakamahalaga kasi ito ay panibagong hamon sa atin. Lagi nating tatandaan ano man ang dumating sa atin, sa ating buhay bilang isang guro. Ang kagawaran ng edukasyon ay laging nakasuporta sa atin upang ibigay sa atin 
yung mga pangangailangan natin, yung mga needs na kailangan natin upang makapag-deliver tayo ng quality-basic education for all. Let us always remember that at this point in time, DepEd cannot do it alone. Kailangan ng DepEd ng suporta nating mga guro, nating mga magulang, ng ating mga mag-aaral, at higit sa lahat ang suporta ng ating mga stakeholders from private and public stakeholders na pwedeng tumulong sa atin sa pagibigay ng quality education sa ating mga bata. Lagi natin iisipin at the end of the day, our goal is to teach minds, touch hearts, and transform lives of our learners. And at the end of the day, we are aiming for a globally competitive learners ready to face the challenges of the 21st century market and the 21st century world. And it's not just about developing their cognitive aspect. We need to develop our learners holistically and at the end of the day, in everything that we do, in everything that we want to do, let us always remember the mandates of DepEd through its mission and vision. And we need to develop a learner that is makajos, makakalikasan, makatao, at makabansa. So I think that concludes my presentation about this about my talk on reinventing the wheel, empowering the teachers in preparation for the new normal classroom. Before I end my talk, konting paalala lang po, huwag po natin kalimutan, i-like at i-share ang episode natin today. This is PNU Talks, and muli, ako po si Ginoong Salvador, Eustachio Malansala, at sumain nyo ang PNU Talks, hatid po sa atin ng Philippine Normal University, Manila, Again, keep safe. Maraming maraming salamat po.